in this class i am going to explain about supply voltage scaling for low power the supply voltage scaling means in order to decrease in order to decrease the vdd scales the vdd that is the supply voltage scaling in order to get the low power when you supply the uh, supply uh, when you scale the supply voltage at that time the power dissipation decreases and we get we require low power that is the concept for supply voltage scaling for a low power then see the introduction to the top topic supply voltage scaling for low power see here the total power dissipation we already know how is the power dissipation what are the two all the power dissipations we have in previous videos then see the total power dissipation can be represented by simplified equation that is p voltage total power dissipation that equal to dynamic power dissipation plus static power dissipation okay the total power dissipation equal to dynamic power, dynamic power dissipation plus static power dissipation although the dynamic power dissipation has three components the dynamic power dissipation has three components we see we have already seen the previous videos the dynamic power dissipation is divided into three types that is the first one is switching power dissipation switching power dissipation means when the capacitor the all out capacitor is charging and discharging at that time the power dissipation occurs that is the switching power dissipation this is the main power dissipation in dynamic power dissipation it is almost 80 to 90 percent it is almost 80 to 90 percent of the power dissipation see here the formula that equal to p switch equal to alpha naught alpha naught is nothing but switching activity cl is the load capacitance then vdd vdd is equal to the supply voltage then f is the clock frequency this is the switching power dissipation it is the very important power dissipation in then power dissipation of it is almost 90 percent of the power dissipation okay then the second one is switching power dissipation the switching power dissipation is nothing but when the gate when the gate logic has a certain delay due to that delay the output we will get the glitches the output we will get the glitches due to these glitches the, the glitching power dissipation will be occur it can be ignored this this switching power dissipation can be ignored that is it, this power dissipation almost 10 percent in the in this case it can be ignored then the third one is then the third one is short circuit power dissipation short circuit power dissipation is nothing but when the pull up network and pull down network when the pull up network and pull down network is in on position for a small amount of time at that time what happened means the direct power is established between vdd and ground this at that time the power dissipation will be occurred that is called short circuit power dissipation this can be reduced this short circuit power dissipation can be reduced when you give the quality input means less less fall time and less size time, less size time and the input has less fall time and less size time at that time the short circuit dissipation will be decreases okay this is the dynamic power dissipation the first one is switching power dissipation it, it is more predominant uh, why it is more predominant means it is almost 80 to 90 percent of power dissipation then switching power dissipation this can be ignored then short circuit power dissipation that was the power dissipation is decreases when you when you give the quality input Okay, this this is about the dynamic power. Then we will see the static power. The static power has also three dominant components. Actually, the static power has many leakage currents due to the static power is due to many leakage currents, almost eight to nine leakage currents. Here we will see the main dominant dominant leakage currents. Okay, the first one is subthreshold leakage. The first one is subthreshold leakage. Subthreshold leakage is nothing but a actually when the device is start conduction then the, the voltage equal to the gate voltage equal to vtr greater than vt means the gate voltage equal to threshold voltage or greater than threshold voltage when the when the device start conduction below the threshold voltage that is called subthreshold voltage at this region the leakage power will be happen that is called subthreshold leakage power okay that is called subthreshold leakage power then gate leakage what is a gate leakage the oxide the oxide layer of the the oxide layer that is gate uh, in between gate and substrate is thinner at that time what happen means the electrons is jumps from gate to substrate and substrate to gate that is the gate leakage then the third one is band to band tunneling current band to band tunneling current is due to actually for, uh, 
for a mass transistor we have a parasitic diodes in between diffusion on the substrate we have a parasitic diodes in between diffusion on the substrate when current passing passing through this diode due to due to the electron stems from valency band of p type through the convection band of n type the electron stems from valency band of p type to the convection band of n type that is called band to band tunneling current okay this is the static power dissipation these are the main dominant components in static power dissipation okay then see this point because of quadratic dependence of dynamic power the because of quadratic dependence of dynamic power on the supply voltage the supply voltage is quadratically depends on the dynamic power when the supply voltage is scaling was initially in developed to reduce the dynamic power in this point we can clearly see that when the supply voltage is scaled the dynamic power will be reduces okay the, see the second point but the supply voltage also scaled to reduce the static power dissipation when we scale the supply voltage the static power dissipation also reduced why because the sub threshold leakage power is reduced the sub threshold leakage power is reduced due to re reduction in drain to drain induced barrier lowering and gate induced drain leakage and gate tunneling current through this three leakage currents the sub threshold leakage will be reduced to this three to this three topics to when when, the, when you reduce this three topics then the sub threshold voltage leakage power also reduced at that time the static power reduced when you scales the when you scales the supply voltage okay in this we clearly say that the supply voltage is when the supply voltage is scaled at that time the static power dissipation also reduces from these two point we clearly say that the from the above above discussion is from these two points we clearly say that the it is quite evident that reducing the supply voltage that is vdd is most effective way to reduce the dynamic power this dynamic power and static power dissipations we finally conclude that for this above two, two discussions we finally conclude that when you reduce the supply voltage or when you scale the supply voltage the both dynamic power and static power dissipations will be reduces okay remember this one see here see here this graph in on x axis we have vdd this vdd means supply voltage and this is the normalized energy normalized energy nothing but a power into delay this normalized energy gives the performance okay remember that one this normalized energy gives the performance see here when you scale the supply voltage means when you scale the vdd means when you decrease the vdd see here the performance will be decreases okay when you scale the vdd when you scale the power supply at that time the performance will be decreases see here in this figure when you scale the vdd what happens the delay will be increases in y axis we have normalized delay the normalized delay will be increases okay when you scale the when you scale the supply voltage we have advantage that is the power dissipation will be decreases both static and dynamic but when you scale the vdd in this graph we clearly say that the performance increases decreases the performance increases means as usually the delay increases the performance increases means as usually the delay increases let's see here how much delay we will get the delay of a circuit is related to the supply supply voltage by the following equation we in this equation we clearly see that see this equation delay is proportional to vdd by vdd minus vt whole square this vdd is the supply voltage then this one is the output voltage delay means input voltage by supply voltage mean input voltage by output voltage that is that will give the delay that equal to see here take here vdd as common take here vdd as common denominator then we will get vdd 1 minus vt by vdd whole square actually here we have vdd this vdd and this vdd will cancel okay here this is the printing mistake in our test book you need to correct this one here there is no vdd here okay there is no vdd here then we will get simply 1 by 1 minus vt by vdd whole square okay here there is no vdd in this equation in this expression we clearly say that the delay is inversely proportional to the supply voltage okay when we when we decrease the supply voltage the delay will be increases here in this graph also we will see that when we decrease the supply voltage the delay will be increases okay the delay will be increasing in this equation we clearly mention that the delay is inversely proportional to the supply voltage okay see this one 
the loss in the performance can be co compensated by using a sortable techniques the loss in the performance can be when you when you scale down the supply voltage at that time loss will be happens we we'll clearly see that delay will be increases the loss can be compensated the loss can be overcome by using a sortable techniques at different level of design hierarchy okay we have design hierarchy means we have in vlsc design we have a particular design hierarchy at this design hierarchy we have physical level logical level architecture level algorithm level and system level in in, in these levels we will use a sortable technique to increase the performance okay some of the approaches to increase the performance are when uh, some of the approaches to scale down the voltage we will see in this one see here the voltage scaling approaches can be divided into four categories these are the voltage scaling approaches to minimize the disadvantages when you when we scale the supply voltage okay see the first one static voltage scaling static voltage scaling static voltage scaling means the supply voltage is a is a fixed value and the supply voltage is a fixed value if you, if you scale the voltage from 5 volts to 3 volts the 3 volts is a fixed value to the circuit to the circuit see here fixed voltages are applied to one or more sub subsystems or blocks okay the fixed voltage is applied to the one or more subsystem the fixed voltage may be 3 volts 4 volts or 2 volts or 1.1 volts like that that is static voltage scaling then see the second one this is the multi multi level voltage scaling in this in this topic call we clearly see that multi level voltage means we will use two or more two or few means one or uh, two or three voltage levels means we will we'll scale the vdd to three voltage two voltage or one uh, or at four voltage like that one or one or uh, two or two or three voltage discrete voltage levels applied to the different blocks okay here only one fixed fixed supply voltage is applied to the supply applied to the subsystems or blocks here we use two or more discrete voltage applied to the subsystems or blocks see here the third one this this all this one by one topic is overcomes the previous topics the static voltage sub scaling is overcome and the reservoir is overcome in this multi multi voltage scaling this is the extension of this one static voltage scaling then this is the this dynamic voltage and frequency scaling is extension of this multi voltage multi level voltage scaling see here what is the multi level voltage scaling see where the large number of discrete voltages are applied here we using we are applying the large number of discrete voltages we scales the voltage uh, we scales the supply voltage and apply the large number of discrete voltages to the to the subsystems okay uh, are applied in the response to the change in the workload condition of the subsystems according to the change in workload conditions we will apply the uh, sortable voltages okay sortable discrete voltages okay this is the dynamic voltage of frequency scaling then the final one is this is the this is the extension of the this this dynamic voltage and frequency scaling here in this in this topic we will see that adaptive voltage adaptive means the voltage is automatically changes the voltage is automatically the voltage is automatically scale and automatically changes depending upon the workload see here we are a closed loop control system continuously monitoring the workload and adjust the supply voltage okay here it is a closed loop then we will get the feedback according to this feedback the supply voltage will be adjusted these are the various voltages various voltage scaling approaches the first one is static voltage scaling second one is multi level voltage scaling the third one is dynamic voltage scaling and frequency scaling the fourth one is adaptive voltage scaling these are the advanced one here we will we will automatically adjust the supply voltage according to the workload we will, we will automatically adjust the voltage means we will get the feedback due to the closed loop control system okay these are the voltage scaling approaches this these are voltage scaling approaches we will see deeply in the next next videos okay that's it for the introduction of this uh, supply voltage scaling for a low power